In this video, we show you how to update a document using Python, Flask, and MongoDB. So let's hit to VS Code. In the previous videos, I have connected to the database and I have shown you how to create and read elements or documents. Let's create a new route. It doesn't matter what you do it. You can do it any way you want. I will just do it right there. Let's create the route app.route. And this is going to allow us to update a user. So we create the path users, and then I'm going to pass the ID of the user that I want to update. This is how you retrieve a variable via the URL, or how you expect to get a variable. The methods in this case will be not get, not post. We're going to use patch. You could also use put if you want. Let's create a function, call it update user. And since we expect to get ID, we're going to write ID in there. If this was called IDX, then you should put IDX right there. So this will be the ID variable. To test it, the first thing we're going to do, we're just going to return whatever, pass, whatever ID we pass back to the client. Let's save it. Let's go to, v, to Postman. And let's create a new route. This is going to be a patch. It's going to be for localhost users, and that will pass one. That will be the ID that I want to pass. Therefore, we get one back. If we pass 10, we get 10 back. Back to this code. Now that we have the return ID, we always need to do a try and an accept. We're going to get an exception as ex. If something goes wrong, I will do this with the stars now. I will print one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. And then I will just duplicate this so it's easier for us to, to spot the exception if we get there. Let me just do it like so. But this will be working. The exception will run in the terminal. So it will be displayed right here. We also need to respond back to the user, to the client, with some data. For now, we just copy this return, and then I will paste it right there. I will make a few changes to it. I think that will be indented correctly. We're not going to send AD back, and this will do. So we just send a message, and this will be system under and this is going to update, so cannot update. Sorry, cannot update. And this is not going to be a 200 because that's a success message. I will just send a 500 because this is an exception. So something pretty bad went in the system and that's why you send a 500, which is an internal server error. You just don't want to display that to the user. So you say something else. So in the try, we're going to try to update the user. So we are going to use the DB response so you can see what this contains. And this will be the database, the users, that's the collection. And we're going to update one user. The user that we want to update takes two arguments. The first argument is what we are searching for. So we're going to be searching for the user with ID and the ID, and here comes the line that I showed you in the previous video. The ID is an object ID, so that's why we need this line. Whenever we refer to the object ID, we need this import. So we get back to the ID, and then we say that the ID is going to be the object ID that we imported, and it will be the ID that we pass via the URL. So that is the object that we want to update. That's the first argument. The second argument is what we want to update it with. For the sake of simplicity, I will just say that we are going to set, that will be the key, and the value, which is a JSON object. So we're going to send the, set the name to whatever values we pass via the form. So we say request.form, and then we're going to pass a name. This will update the document, and we're going to send a response back to the user. 
But before we send anything, let's look at this DB response and the data that it contains. For ATTR, you can call this anything you want. In dear DB response, we are going to print ATTR. And for us to be able to see it, how about if we just do something like this, let's do a F string. So we're going to pass the ATTR and I'm just going to surround this with a few stars. Nothing fancy, just that. And we're also going to respond back to the client. So we just copy this return and we paste it. The indentation has to be correct. I think this will be correct. So we're going to send the response and for now the message will say user updated and I will tell you a little bit more about it. So for now let's just save it. The status will be 200 and we save it again. Let's go to Postman. We're going to create a new request. It's going to be a patch. We're going to point to localhost users and we need the ID of a user that exists in our system. In this case, I will select the ID for B, copy it. In the patch, which is the update, I will pass the ID and we also need to go to the body. In the form data, we're going to pass the name that will be A. Remember, the actual name is B, so I'm going to try to change it to A. Send. The user has been updated. Let's check if that's true. We get to the get route. It says A. You can see we have B and A. That's weird. I was sure that I changed the name B to A, not X to A. Let's check it. The ID is 95F, 97F. And the ID is 97F, all right. Yeah, I copied the wrong ID. So this is working fine. Just to make sure that this is fully working, I will copy this ID now, which is B. I will paste it. And I'm going to change the name. Remember, it was B. We're going to change it to C. Send. The user has been updated. We send the request and then we get the letter C and the letter A. So the update is working fine, but this is not good enough for us because sometimes it will update the document and sometimes it will not. Imagine that you want to update C to C on this ID. It didn't really update anything. So I'll show you how we solve that. If we look at this attribute in the response. Let's see what we got here. These are all the options that we have. And you can see that we have one option that says modify count. And that's what we want to check. If it has been modified, we are going to say user updated. And if it didn't modify anything, we're just going to say, well, nothing updated because we didn't need to update anything. So let's do that. Modify count is what we need to use. I will just copy this, control C. And I'm going to comment this out because now we know what we need to use. And then I will just do an if statement. If a DB response dot modify count equals one. If so, I'm going to return this nice response. I will just do it like this, indent it one time. So the message, the user has been updated. And that is if it was one or else if it's not one. Or else we're going to return. I will just copy the return message and indent it correctly. I will just response. Actually, these are 200. That's correct. And this also 200. That's correct. But then I will just say that nothing to update. Even though it found the user, nothing needed to be updated. Save it again. 
Now let's go to Postman. I'm going to, in the patch, I'm going to change this ID to C, which was the previous change, so nothing should change. Send, nothing to update. If I say I'm going to change it to D, then we get user updated. Check it here, we get the D. So this is how you solve the if else. I'm not sure if you even need this else because this if should return it. I haven't tested this. Let me just do it for now. Delete the else and then one time to the left. Save it. Not sure about this, but makes some sense. I will D on this ID, which was previously changed, send, nothing to update. And now we'll set it back to B send user updated so this is working fine this is how you can modify a user and this is how you can check what the response contains in the next video i will show you how we delete a user